Hey there, quirky folks. I'm your host, Anna, and today we're going to continue the House of the Dragon fever that has been going on. We've been presenting the family trees and histories of several prominent characters and houses in House of the Dragon. You guys loved our Targaryen family tree and our Daemon video. But surprisingly, the Hightower family tree and history video didn't get a lot of attention. So be sure to watch that, as it is even more detailed. I've placed the link in the description and at the end as well if you're interested in the scheming High Towers. But right now, we're going to look into the Sea Snake, aka Corlys Valarian, and his family tree. My house is Valerian, the greatest power in the realm. Based on the mythos presented in George R. R. Martin's novel Fire and Blood, Corlys Valarian will play a crucial role in House of the Dragon's upcoming seasons. Besides being known as the Sea Snake, he was a fabled Lord of the Tides the master of Driftmark, and the head of House Valarian. Belonging to this ancient and proud house, he has had the blood of Old Valeria flowing in his veins. According to tradition, House Valarian was the oldest and closest ally of the Targaryens. And the Sea Snake also supported King Viserys. But after him, the Targaryens are going to be divided into two major parties, the Greens and the Blacks. And the Sea Snake is only going to support one of those. Before I move on, I must issue a spoiler warning as I will be spoiling the future story of House of the Dragon. But I presume that you guys clicked only because you wanted to know everything about Corlys Velaryon and his family. So without any further ado, let's move ahead and start with the Velaryon family tree. Corlys Velaryon is presumed to be the child of Daemon's oldest son, Corwin Velaryon. And no, this isn't Daemon Targaryen, so don't get confused. There were two Daemon Velaryons in this family. But moving on to Corlys, he married Rhaenys Targaryen, the queen who never was. The queen who never was. They had two children, a son named Lenor and his younger sister Lena. Lenor, the rider of sea smoke, eventually rode Rhaenyra and they had three boys, Jacaris, Lucerys, and Joffrey. Meanwhile, Lena Valerian, who was once proposed to be wedded to King Viserys, eventually ended up marrying his brother Daemon. They had two daughters, Reyna and Bela. Then after a decade after Lenor was killed, there was a twist in the tale. A traitor from Driftmark called Merilda of Hull emerged. She claimed that her two sons, Adam and Alan, were actually Lenor's bastards. The boys did have Lenor's looks. But despite suspicions against Merilda's claims, Corlys accepted his two grandchildren. Apparently, there were rumors that these children didn't come from Lanor, but Corlys himself. But that was never confirmed. Anyway, out of Adam and Alan, the latter ended up marrying Daemon and Lena's daughter, Bela Targaryen. They had two kids who were inconsequential to the story of Corlys. This is where the important part of the Sea Snakes family tree comes to an end. Now let's move on to History of Corlys Velaryon. He is called the Sea Snake because he was famous for his sailing voyages across the world. And guess what? His strong ship was also called the Sea Snake. He belongs to one of the wealthiest houses in Westeros. In fact, House Velaryon got much richer than the Lannisters and the High Towers due to their sea trade under Corlys. He was named after his great-granduncle, Sir Corlys Velaryon, who was the first Lord Commander of the King's Guard during King Aegon's rule. He and his wife Rhaenys proposed their 12-year-old daughter to be wedded to King Viserys. Join our families. Wed our daughter Lena. Unite the two great surviving Valerian houses. But things became salty between Corlys and Viserys as the latter chose Alicent Hightower instead. Viserys also did not heed to his demands of marching against the crab feeder at the Stepstones. I want to seize the Stepstones by force and burn out this crab feeder. I am not prepared to start a war with the Free Cities. So Corlys turned to the rogue Prince Daemon, who ultimately won him the war. He crowned Daemon as the King of the Stepstones and the Narrow Sea. Once we smash the Triarchy, they name me King of the Narrow Sea. His son Lenor Valarian got married to Rhaenyra, and the bond between House Targaryen and House Valarian was restored. I know tempers ran hot today. I wanted to assure you how much I value the bond between our houses. Rhaenys is my favorite cousin after all. But then, Rhaenyra and Lenor's three children, Jacaris, Lucerys, and Joffrey, looked nothing like them. So, it was rumored that these three boys actually came from Rhaenyra and Sir Harwin Strong, and Lenor actually preferred to sleep with men over women. Meanwhile, his sister Lena was promised to a sea lord of Braavos. But after the demise of Daemon's wife, Rhea Royce, 
He laid eyes on Lena and wanted to marry her. So he killed the Bravosi in a duel with his dark sister Blade, and Corliss happily agreed to wed Lena to Damon. Then Corliss became the supporter of the Blacks and obviously chose Rhaenyra's claim for succession. Eventually, his daughter died a few days after giving birth to her third child, who also didn't live for long, and his son Leonard was stabbed to death by Sir Carl Corey. In the same year, even Lord Lionel Strong and his son Sir Harwin Strong died in a fire, but it was rumored that Corliss had a hand in that fire. He wanted revenge because of the whole Harwin and Rhaenyra scenario. In 126 AC, Corliss fell sick and the matter of his succession in Driftmark came to rise. His eldest grandson, Jacaris, stood the greatest claim to inherit his seat. But his petty brother, Vaemon Velaryon, insisted that he should be considered as Jacaris and the other two boys were Harwin's bastards. So, while Corliss was lying on bed, Daemon seized and executed his brother Vaemon. When Vaemon's wife, children, and siblings went to King Viserys to seek for justice, even he didn't support them. Instead, Viserys had them all punished as they were trying to spread rumors about Rhaenyra's children. Who is responsible for this gossip? Have this rumor manga brought before me at once, and I will take their eyes. But then in 129 AC, Corliss healed from his illness and King Viserys died instead. Then began the Dance of the Dragons. Viserys and Alicent's son, Aegon II, secretly took over the throne, even though Rhaenyra was named as the heir. So, Corliss then traveled to Dragonstone, where Rhaenyra was awaiting the birth of her third child with Daemon. Corliss lent his support to her, and all the men sworn to his house joined Rhaenyra's army, which grew insanely strong. This was a time when a lot of important names kept on dying one after the other. Rhaenyra sent her son Lucerys to gain more support for her cause. Meanwhile, Rhaenys Targaryen took her dragon Maelys, the Red Queen, to support Lord Staunton at Rook's Rest. She fought Aegon II on his dragon Sunfire and Aemond on his dragon Vagar. Despite fighting valiantly and injuring her opponents, she eventually died. Meanwhile, Aemond had killed Lucerys as well. So, both Rhaenyra and Corlys were fueled by rage. Upon Rhaenyra's coronation at Dragonstone, Corliss was named the Hand of the Queen. Then, Jacaris offered people at Dragonstone to claim a few dragons. So, Leonard's proclaimed bastard Adam succeeded at claiming Sea Smoke, the dragon that Leonard himself rode. Along with him, there was Nettles and two other new dragon riders, and they fought on Rhaenyra's side. First, Corliss formed a blockade at Blackwater Bay, and Rhaenyra was able to take the Iron Throne. Then he formed another blockade at the Battle of the Gullet, but this one was broken and the Valarians lost nearly one-third of their ships. Jacaris died because two of the four new dragon riders had betrayed the Blacks and joined the Greens. So, Rhaenyra went paranoid as she had turned into a total mad queen by this time. She ordered the arrest of the other two honest dragon riders, Adam and Nettles. Now because Adam was rumored to be the son of Corlys instead of Lenner, Big Daddy Valarian allowed Adam to flee King's Landing. So, Rhaenyra threw Corlys in a dungeon, and his entire fleet abandoned Rhaenyra's cause after this. Ultimately, Rhaenyra had to flee King's Landing herself as riots had begun under her rule. Then, Aegon II killed Rhaenyra and took over King's Landing. He pardoned Corlys in exchange of his support and wealth, and Corlys then served on his small council. But he refused the execution of Rhaenyra's younger son, Aegon III. Because of this, when Aegon II died and Aegon III took over the throne, Corlys was appointed as his regent in 131 AC. He proved to be one of the most powerful regents and died of old age in 132 AC. So even though he was ruling in place of Aegon III, he basically died as a king. His body was placed beneath the Iron Throne for a week, and then his remains were sent home to Driftmark. They were buried in the sea atop his old ship, the Sea Snake, which was made to sink. Among the many important players of this lore, the Sea Snake truly lived a solid life and was one of the rare ones to get a peaceful death. Okay, that's all from his history. Hit the like and subscribe buttons if you have enjoyed this video as much as our previous family trees and character studies. Goodbye, and I'll see you in the next one.